Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach, and I am deviating from my release schedule to take another look at Verde Beach and the highway that we're creating. I didn't get as far as I wanted to in the last episode, and I just am too excited to continue working on this to wait until the next episode, uh, or the next release, rather, on Tuesday. So what we're looking at right now is what was called the heart interchange in uh, the last, uh, or in the comments for the last episode, and it's ugly. <laughs> and immediately after I built this, I regretted it. But we have an opportunity here. We have a bridge, and what I think we can do here is, is add a roundabout rather than this funky heart thing, and that would resolve some of the backup that we're seeing here because of the stoplight that I added. So this interchange could serve as the template for what we're gonna do everywhere else too. So without any further ado, let's get started on that because this is something I'm, I'm really interested in. So to start, I think we're gonna pause this because we're gonna have a major reconstruction project and that could lead to some issues. I'm just gonna use my standard dirt roads here. And in fact, I am gonna take out part of this bridge. It'll just make it easier for me to construct. So I always see questions about why I don't use the curved road tool. I do use it. I just use it in very specific places. <laughs> and this is, this is certainly one of those places where in my opinion, it makes a ton of sense to use it. So even though I don't need this cross in there to to make things line up just right, I'm gonna add this so that my junctions do not have an Im a negative impact on the roundabout. Because sometimes you can see that adding these ramps will actually take the whole roundabout and ruin it. I don't wanna do that. This has suddenly become very, very British, and I love it. <laughs> I think it's gonna work really well. We need to get our train line back in there, and then we should be good to go on this particular intersection, or interchange, rather. Oh, I love this. <laughs> this looks so much better, and I think it's gonna work a lot better, too. Let's run it and see how this looks. Just wanna speed things up for a quick second. Look at that. That is beautiful. This is really steep. We should probably improve that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna improve that. Oh yeah, I still got it. <laughs> it's like riding a bike now. <laughs> All right, so I've got the slope tool down and I've totally destroyed that. That's okay. We're gonna go. Look at this. So this is something I could have a roundabout here and that would probably do the trick too. Interestingly, a lot of the traffic is, is heading out towards sunset, backing up right here. Hmm, I don't love that. In fact, I think a way to fix this might actually be to have a stop sign. Truthfully, a roundabout is probably the right solution here. Maybe even over here. We can see that this is a bottleneck point. Yeah, so I, I think that one of the things I might do to improve this would be to have a small roundabout here on, well, it's Young Street. That's actually supposed to be Sunset. <laughs> you know, truthfully, uh, I mean, this is the prioritized movement. Because Sunset does not currently extend, I think we're just gonna be cheap about it right now. <laughs> and we'll change the prioritization. It would be totally fine to have this what is now a dead-end road going nowhere. <laughs> Not having the priority. We'll fix this in the future. I think that we're gonna probably need to do something more significant here. While I'm over here though, we haven't done a lot with road naming. I'm kind of saving that for the stream that we're gonna have. Probably not this weekend, maybe next. I think it, that'll be a good time for it. So one of the things that was pointed out in the comments was that right here, the one ways are causing trains to disappear. So why don't we just add two ways and hopefully that will resolve those issues. Very good, we'll slow things down. I've got things just cranked right now. That's, 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 that's nice. Use the power of YouTube to turn the day night cycle off because that was <laughs> just uh, not really what I was looking for for this particular build. 
it's difficult on a highway build to uh, to, to actually have that setting on. So all right, we've got an, our next situation to to to, uh, to contend with. We have an at grade crossing here, and I saw a comment. Uh, someone who was a, a civil engineer said that this really pained them, and as a planner, this pains me too. So uh, we're not going to leave this. <laughs> it was definitely just just a uh, just a, just a way to get the get the episode to its uh, conclusion. <laughs> So we are going to need to do some more grading here. That's the first thing I can see. So we'll take this in. I'm probably going to try to return some of this soil. Obviously, this wouldn't be a very realistic thing to do. To just <laughs> grade into a hillside and hope for the best. And then, you know, add it back later on. But it's a game. And we don't have the ability to, to do any really advanced planning for this. So... I would look at this as a totally rational deviation from reality. <laughs> so. See that our berm here is actually going to cause some issues, or it already has caused issues with our roundabout. So we're going to take it down. We'll add it back later. And I keep going into that wrong menu. I'm taking that three tiles up. At this point, I want to use my road guidelines to try to line these bridges up as best I can. This is where the freeform tool comes in super handy. You can see I was able to make a nice sweep right there. We've got more berming issues, so we will remedy that. Not, uh, not a big deal at all. We'll just continue to uh, use our grading tool very liberally. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I feel very lucky that I didn't totally deform this roundabout. I didn't have the cross in there. That is a no-no. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hope that I'm able to to get this right with this last connection. So I had this just going up a hillside. Now that we know how to use our slope terrain tool, why don't we use it? Oh, <laughs> that's so pretty. I love that. I love that so much. What a beautiful connection. That is lovely. So, we will upgrade these roads. All right, and now, last but not least, we need to get our train over. So in this particular location, I think it would actually be more reasonable to elevate the rail um, because the grading would be so expensive, so cost prohibitive that, you know, raising this up might not be the most expensive way of doing this. That looks really good to me. So let's get this hill back where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to learn to love these really significant slopes. Uh, that was, you know, I saw a number of comments about how people thought that that was reasonable based on where they live. And as a flatlander, Midwesterner, <laughs> you know, we have rolling hills. And there are a few places, you know, believe it or not, especially when you, when you get to the Mississippi, where we do have significant slopes where they blasted out to put a highway in. And it is a really interesting landscape. I think my bigger problem here is not so much the slope but but that the vanilla LUT just this kind of or, or the vanilla uh map theme i just i, I think that the, the cliffs aren't very attractive <laughs> so that's probably my bigger issue and then stuff like this like, come on <laughs> that said there's nothing natural about this berm so i would think that it's okay to smooth the berm out a bit and places where maybe there's a little bit more room to grade, I, I will smooth the slope a bit. All right, now we have this monstrosity over here. <laughs> so this one would probably be a candidate for an elevated roundabout. If you just kind of look at, at the location, it kind of just makes more sense. So I think that's what we're gonna do with this one, which is going to be an interesting dynamic certainly a more difficult construction project but 
I think this makes a ton of sense in this particular location. First, we need to do a bit of grading again. Collect the hillside like we have been. <laughs> and then uh, we will try to work this through. So I gotta start with road guidelines on because I want this to line up with the existing road. And then you can see that the road guidelines start to muck everything up. So I turn them off halfway through. So I might need to take the highway out and then work it around the roundabout that I create, which is what I didn't want to do. <laughs> but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So now the primary reason I didn't want to do this is I know that there's going to be a lot of work that I need to do to make this happen. The pillars are getting in the way. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to have to take care of that right now. So I think the main problem is that the roundabout is just not in the right place. We're going to need to take this back. So as I'm looking, it's just not very centered on that highway. So we're going to call the mulligan and try to center this up just a little bit more. So I was using the the road as kind of my, I guess, my, uh, my measuring point. Immediate regret. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to deviate from that. Already feeling better about this. I think we should be able to just kind of bring our highway straight through. No problem. Look at that. And as I say that, there's a problem with the next one. <laughs> this is kind of the, the, you know, I know that people mentioned in the comments that these highways seemed a bit close to one another. But one tile space, uh, spacing there. That is tight. That is very tight. But I think we'll, we'll be able to make it work. So this part of the highway just will not be perfect, and I'm totally okay with that. Sometimes you have minor deviations from your plans, and it gives the city more character, a little more life. So here's where I go freeform all the way to get us back into a nice straight strip. There we go. So this isn't centered, but this isn't centered in a way that we can live with. So I will, uh, I will be happy with this. So now we just need to try to not destroy our ramps. I'm gonna take these out of ways. I want it to be a nice, clean connection. Oh, that's nice. That's that's very nice. Reverse this before we forget. We've got one more coming. So the problem is this ramp is gonna be very close to that road. The only elegant solution is to use a little bit of eminent domain on this farm, and I think that is exactly what we're going to do. I am sorry, Hamilton Hills Farm, but I promise you that all of this is in your best interest. Your land is becoming so valuable <laughs> with, this, with this direct interstate access. Interestingly, I like the, the one side more than the other. <laughs> so I think that something kind of wonky happened here with some of our grading. That's okay, we can handle this. Not insurmountable at all. That is lovely. So now we need to get our rail connection. Oh, we got soil issues again. Well, I know one place that we need to make some fixes. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to help or not. Nope. <laughs> so that's going to be a, a, an issue. So now I'm really playing around the fringes. <laughs> so I think that we're going to need to hold off for a second. We need to dump some of this soil. Where are we going to dump it? I guess we could dump it right here. So I think most of the time this kind of soil... you you know, that, that came from this project, very costly to move. You'd probably try to give it away. You probably couldn't. <laughs> you might just move it. You might just make a dirt pile somewhere. <laughs> and that might be your best solution. <laughs> we were able to kind of, kind of figure it out. So let's get this train through here. We need our snap tubes back. 
So someone mentioned in the comments that it seemed, um, what's the what's the charitable way of putting this? Um, not even charitable, just the right way of putting it. So someone mentioned that it seemed like I was building these highways way too close. So there are two ways that you can expand a roadway. Only one in the game, but you could either reserve that land in the in the middle, and um, it, you know it build into the middle, or you could build out. Uh, and then if, if things got really hairy, uh, you could do things like allow shoulder running, you know, uh, during peak periods. Obviously not something you could do here. What that would involve would be moving this stripe over to the side, adding another kind of a, an HOV lane, high occupancy vehicle lane, carpooling, or you could do bus on shoulder or something like that. Can't do any of those things in the game. Um, the other thing you could do is you could, you could reserve right away on the outside. So that's, I think, probably what would happen. So you wouldn't worry about expand, expanding towards the middle. You'd worry about expanding out. And you might reserve 50 feet on either side or more to ensure that you're not uh, stuck in a situation where down the line you can't expand the highway because you've, you've, you've put yourself in a situation where you've allowed development to occur. Uh, at least if you're the Department of Transportation. So that's what I think would happen, and there wouldn't be a lot of concern about the distance right now. Or the gap, rather. All right, I hate this. <laughs> so I just talked a big game about uh, accepting abnormalities. And uh, while I generally believe that, deviations are fine, this is not one that I'm okay with. This, on the other hand, well, a bit wonky, I can live with that. I would much prefer, and actually, another idea. Let's see how close we can get this land to this particular bridge segment. This is just a, just a, a trial. So I will be 100% realistic and honest with you. I can't believe it let me do this. <laughs> but... But I think that this is a very, very reasonable solution, especially when we have really an overwhelming amount of fill that we just don't know what to do with. And you want to reduce the bridge spans as much as you can. This is a way of doing it. You'd want to build up that land because building up that land is always going to be cheaper than trying to create a bridge. And it's safer, um, you know. You have sufficiency ratings for all of those bridge components and they're expensive <laughs> to, to maintain, to replace. So yeah, this is probably the best solution that we could come up with. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is lovely. You see, I was able to just build this up a little bit here. We've got a flat chunk going directly into this bridge. I have never done this before and I am in love. And we can run it again. That is wonderful. Look at this. That, that is very sharp. Not ideal angle, but I don't think we ever anticipated getting an ideal angle right here. Look at that. That's smooth. That is running smooth. So if we were concerned about lane mathematics, we could certainly you know, remove one lane right here, kind of force some of that traffic into a certain direction. Um, that's kind of a way you can do it in vanilla. I'm not overly concerned. I never really think about lane mathematics all that much, truthfully, myself. Um, probably to my own detriment. <laughs> Maybe I'm just saving this so Biffa can take a look at it and, and scold me. <laughs> Which, you know, Maybe I deserve it. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm looking at all this traffic kind of perplexed. Why is this guy, why is this happening? Well, there's an easy reason and this is it. <laughs> all right, so that is ugly. That looks absolutely horrendous. Just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is good enough. Now we have cars going through here and not over this road, hopefully. Let's speed it up and see if this traffic clears out. Okay, so this isn't gonna clear out and I can see why already. 
So if we take a look at this, let's see what road this is. This is Cargo Way. It makes sense that there's a lot of demand to use it. And that's because we have this cargo terminal with absolute madness and pandemonium happening around it. Well, we're separating the cargo lines, so we need to finish the other half of this roundabout. The other half of this roundabout is going to be a cargo line. So why don't we steal this height right here? We'll just start to mirror that over here. <sighs> That's a heavy sigh because I am running into soil issues. But here's the thing. Soil issues are a fact of city planning. It's a, it's a fact of city engineering. It's a fact of life. You can't just have unlimited soil in real life. and I'm not going to do it now. So we're going to figure out a place to put this. And uh, one of the comments I saw a couple times in the comments was that the EPA would not be very happy with my solution to, uh, to dumping soil in the ocean. So my thought process there was I dredged all this up. I probably should have built the highway with the airport. And if I would have done that, I could have used all of this soil from the hillside and dumped it into the airport, the airport build. So I'm not going to get overly critical about that. So I'll just fill in the ocean floor where I dug up soil in the past. That's lovely. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, you know what's not lovely? There's this dip and low segment of the bridge that someone pointed out in the comments. We're going to take care of that, but I can't. I, I've got to wait. i got to finish this. So much to do. So what I'm thinking is I will add the cargo. Oh, and I'll do that all wrong. So I'm going to add the cargo terminal up here. And we'll try to figure this out. So again, we don't want this to be a, a road that is traveled for much more than just this cargo. Well, no, this is going to be a collector. So we're going to have this collector. The collector will go into a local and the local will be where we have our cargo terminal. So I'm going to have a turn on this roundabout immediately. Oh, that is so ugly. I wish I didn't have this train line here because I'd love to do what I did over here. Get this extra crosswalk, but it's okay. We will deal with our situation. It's not that big of a deal. This will be a future collector. I don't know what's going to happen with this right now. We don't have big grand plans for this part of the city. I would look at this as an unplanned addition. Oh, I just, I, I don't like this. I think we might, yeah, we're going to make this a local road. This will just exist to serve the cargo terminal. I'm deviating from my plans, my best laid plans, <laughs> which weren't very good. <laughs> so here I am going to go ahead and use a roundabout using the construction cost, so going 100, 100, 100, this is just the turnaround freeform to connect, delete the center, and then go ahead and we'll have a little bit of a roundabout right there. Now, because this is a game to save some money, I'm going to just relocate this terminal right here. And then we're going to take some of this hillside, carve it in just a bit more, just a bit more. Now we're going to need to get really good with our, our, our smoothing. And that was not it. That was using the wrong tool. Definitely the wrong tool to get the job done. There we go. This is better. And then we're going to use our freeform tool, which is always the right tool to do everything. <laughs> there we go. We got a nice smooth connection up here. And then we need an equally smooth connection down. Now, I think that we're going to need to go in both directions here because of what we're doing. So we're going to have to really use this plateau tool to our advantage. Oh, this is dangerously close. We're going to need to back this up just a little bit. Now we at least have a train link there. So this should improve things. We do need some water over here. And we're going to need power as well. So we're going to take care of that right now. We're actually going to purposely not go underneath all of these bridge structures. 
Last thing we want to do is dig up those structures to service this water main. And now for power, we'll have a transmission line that goes across the highway. We will raise this up a little bit and then lower it right back down. Hopefully this will accept it. No, oh, bummer. It will accept that. <laughs> so we will, oh, well, hopefully. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, that's, that's sad. <laughs> there we go. Now let's see what this does. There's some ugly bumpies here. We're gonna take care of that. Man, we need some landscaping. <laughs> Desperately need some landscaping, but I think because I just want to get this infrastructure in place today, we're just gonna hold off on a lot of that. Let's see how this is gonna work. I'm gonna speed it up to see what our traffic looks like in this area. So this is not at all what I wanted. You can see that the whole roundabout's backing up because of this right here. And the main issue that we're seeing, it has to do with lanes. So if you wanna leave this ramp right here, or you wanna go here, you're stuck because you're in the same lane. So we can get wild. We could add another through lane here. And the rules of lane mathematics will tell me that this is correct this as well so we'll see what that does i think that the real problem is there's a lot of desire to actually use this facility so as a result we're just seeing a lot of activity that looks it looks like it may help a little bit oh we're backing up onto the highway now shoot what are you guys doing no don't really ppl truck you're, you're gonna go all the way over all right, I've got a solution for you. Prioritization. <laughs> I don't love, I, this is where a, a yield or a giveaway sign should reasonably be, be placed, but I can't do that. But a stop sign might be good enough to prioritize that movement. I'd rather see backups on this road. I wish that the, the vehicles would loop. A couple are. This just might be hairy for a little while. We're gonna have to keep an eye on this. We've got a lot of stuff happening here and I'm not a big fan of a lot of these things, but I, I'm always reluctant because you never know how much of your traffic problem is the old queue and the old routing sorting itself out and how much of it is actually you made a mistake <laughs> with your planning. And as a result, you're going to see lots of backups and some of this might be, you know, I, I will be 100% upfront about that. Just thinking, this is not a very long span, but could I use the new bridge? And I can't. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, actually, a three lane highway viaduct. I can. Oh, that is, that is nice. Let's take a look at that. That is pretty, I like that. It's got the uh, the barriers on the end. Oh, and I've, I've, I've inadvertently upgraded the whole thing. And truthfully, it seems like it helped. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't expect that to be the case, <laughs> um, but I'm not going to be mad about it. Yeah, I will. I will. I will just accept that. <laughs> Although this road, man, this is brutal. So I don't think that dual lefts here are, are at, or a dual rights in here are at all a great solution. But it does give us more capacity to make that turn, turning movement. So. Maybe it works. Well, it's it's not good. I'll, I'll put it that way. But I, I think I could spend a while trying to fix this right now. And I'm not going to because there's a lot more I want to accomplish. Uh, so one comment that someone made is that they would prefer that I uh, switch the bridging of this uh, interchange. Which I want to say that someone wanted this named... There, it's the Bob Ross Memorial Interchange with lots of policies. <laughs> Let's get rid of the policies just so that we don't have those light logos there. I like that. We're going to need to detail this interchange. If it's Bob Ross's interchange, 
It needs to be special. Lots of trees. <laughs> so that'll be a, that'll be a future project. All right. So we've got this. It's still bad. We're we're but it's better than over here. And, and you can see what the traffic over here is done. We've got some extra tracks now. This would seem to be an excellent uh, land use change over here. Burnt down radio mast. We're back. We're back in business. So now we have all of this land over here that could be redeveloped, which is wonderful. We're going to open up even more in just a second, because what we're going to do is we're going to extend Keller House all the way to this interchange over here. And I'm okay just demolishing this highway while the game is moving, because it doesn't matter anymore. This highway is redundant. So I didn't know this was going to feel <laughs> as good as it did, but getting rid of this highway, look at this land that is freed up. So this is so important. Highways are such significant barriers in urban environments. They have no business cutting through a city. There are reasons why you'd want regional transportation in a city. You know, uh, we're, we have freight here, for instance. That's an excellent reason. You can't have a city with a central commercial district, central business district without freight. That said, you shouldn't prioritize moving people out of your community if you want to have a thriving community. So what we're prioritizing now is connectivity. We're prioritizing people being able to walk places and bike places and see their family and friends without hopping on an interstate. So. Uh, this, I think, is going to be probably the most significant project in Verde Beach's history. It's certainly making it a greener place, and I'm very excited about this project. This is something that is, you know, really... Uh, the, the planning profession is getting it now. Uh, they're trying to right the errors of their past ways. And this means a lot to me personally. I think that this is such a, such a, a great a great step towards the future. So I am going to pause this right now. And the main reason for that is I know that we have a number of, we have a bus route right here. So we're breaking that route. The routing is going to get pretty insane pretty quickly if I don't pause it. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll just pause that, not worry about it. We're going to plateau this, make it nice and pretty. And then again, run this down. We have this power line going right through here and it's not going to matter anymore. Ah, and then we have these rail bridges. <laughs> so these rail bridges have been a point of contention for a segment of the community for a significant amount of time now. So we don't need to have the amount of rail bridges that we have had because this is now a passenger corridor. So we're going to want to do something with this line and extend it somewhere at some point. But that point isn't now. We just want to preserve this bridge structure. So we're going to leave this as kind of a dead end. We're going to eliminate this bridge, which will really be helpful right now. Truthfully, we could probably just turn this into here if we wanted to, so that we could allow that external traffic in. And I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, because we still, we still need to have some external connections. This is a north connection and a south connection. So we need to have and maintain that connection. But it just it isn't going to take the level of prominence that it did before. But we're going to worry about that after we take care of this. So I wanted to make sure I get this in the center of these two ramps, because I know that we're going to need to add or make those connections again. One of the unfortunate things is it looks like where I've moved Keller House doesn't line up with our new bridge, and we're going to need that to be the case. So we are going to deviate a bit, take that back, make sure that this connection can occur in a natural, smooth way. I like it. I'd love to preserve this pedestrian bridge. So as a result, we're going to make sure that Keller House is kind of centered on that bridge. Turn our guides back on. Make a nice, smooth, connect, smooth connection to Keller House. I like it. All right, so... Now that we've done that, we've got one last connection to make. So 
this is one of those areas where I wish that I had a uh, traffic manager. You can see that the lane, they're just insane. <laughs> so we're gonna allow them to loop back around. The way around this might be just to have a roundabout. It looks silly, but it works well. Um, so that might be what we actually are forced to do, unfortunately. Okay, this is a totally nonsense connection, but we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> and you can see that the lane markings line up now and you can loop back around if you have to um, so that works oh and I resumed it before I should have <laughs> we, we, we've got a lot of problems so we need to we need to remedy those so we don't need this roundabout anymore so we can go ahead and make a normal roadway connection here and if we look at our grades we've got some things happening so we are going to use some eminent domain on this farm here, which is kind of becoming a trend. <laughs> and I, I feel bad about that. But if you're going to take any land, farmland is probably the least expensive to take. Here we go a nice, gentle slope down, which is better than I can say for these other slopes here. Let's, let's fix those. We can't leave that, that lumpy and bumpy when we know that we can do better now. Look at that. Just smooth. Just lovely. All right. So I could see this being a location for a roundabout in the future. I think that we are going to be proactive about that and not use any right-of-way right here. Or not, not build around this, preserve some right-of-way. We're going to have stop signs there. Uh, this is going to function as a two-lane collector. So there's, uh, actually we'll, 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 we'll signalize this. I don't know that it's gonna be warranted or not right now. We're gonna have to kind of play wait and see with this one. We'll go ahead and smooth the terrain out. That would be totally logical. If you're gonna rebuild this in that way, you would wanna do that. We've got some terrain stuff happening here, but it's pretty gradual. And now we've got an issue here where we're gonna have a local road teeing into this arterial I do not like this so the one thing that we could do is we could bridge over it and then we have to replace our bike lanes I don't love this either <laughs> but but I guess I like it a whole heck of a lot more uh, now we don't have a pedestrian connection to Keller house and that's one of the great things about this project is we now get this excellent pedestrian corridor the most direct route anywhere so of course we are going to take advantage of that wherever we can make those key pedestrian connections and not use eminent domain and then get rid of excess infrastructure so okay so we've got that done now we have this really important connection here this was a roundabout. It is no longer a roundabout. Now we just have this welcome sign <laughs> right here. We're going to see how this works without the roundabout. I could certainly see this being a location where we need to add one back in again. So the other interesting thing about this is now we just kind of dump off at our, at our, at our bike facility. I don't love that. We're extending this facility into Keller House and into, uh, let's see. So this road probably has two, yeah, Semper Verde and Myrtle Avenue. Well, there's no way I'm renaming this. <laughs> but I will extend it to where it needs to go. Just a couple odds and ends we need to keep an eye on. So we have these ramps here that we need to remedy as well. And this is gonna be, I mean, this is really important. I mean, Keller House is basically functioning as an urban highway at this point, and that's the point. Um, so what I'm thinking is we'll use our dirt roads again. I want a 90 off here, another 90 off here, and then we're going to connect, we'll connect our existing ramps directly into this, we'll upgrade this to a highway, get this directionality fixed. This could be a lot cleaner, and we might clean this up at some point, but this will at least function, and that is the primary goal right now. 
am going to take this. It is signalized as probably appropriate, truthfully. Uh, we could have stop signs here. I think we're just going to wait and see how it functions. And I think that we're in a place now. Oh, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, 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 we're not. <laughs> I think we're in a place where we can run this. And I'm a liar. <laughs> so we're not in a place where we can run this because we don't have this connection across here. So the, the, what I'm thinking at this point, we could go up and over. We might just go under. We've got a slope too steep problem. Interesting. So we will take this down and I wonder if I just, oh, that is, that, that is a slope that's too steep. <laughs> I don't care what they say. It was way worse in their configuration. Oh, but that's not gonna work. <laughs> so let's let's try to use our new our newly uh, discovered tool but that's not gonna work either this is a really challenging location because of this road right here so we're just gonna take that away for a minute see if that's even necessary when our road guidelines on and that would be very tough on a train uh, if not impossible but you know what it's it's a heck of a lot better than what we had before so we're gonna take it. All right, now that we have this, the last thing we need are our connections from our passenger rail to the external world. I think we're good. I think that we are good. So I'm really interested in seeing what traffic is doing now that we've made all of these changes. Look at that. Keller House is absolutely in use when we're looking at traffic routes. We look at our traffic, we could actually make this connection now if we did something different with the rail. I don't know if that would be valuable or not to the city. I kind of like what we're doing now because we're not allowing Keller House traffic to get onto, I believe that's Oak and uh, yeah, Oak Street. So we're not allowing Keller House to, to get onto here. That said, at this point, Keller House might be a reliever. So it's something we'll want to keep an eye on because you can see the traffic on Keller House is not bad at all. So let's look at this. Not bad. Not bad at all. Bad right here. <laughs> so I see our traffic flow rapidly declining. And I'm wondering how much of that actually has to do with this. So we have an opportunity. Because we had this roundabout here that was unplanned but, but still created. Let's use our opportunity and do something with it. So, what I'm thinking is we're going to take River Street and just make a nice sweeping connection into here. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And then we'll upgrade this to a local road. So this is going to draw some of the, traf some of the traffic to this road and hopefully get it away from this intersection, which see or this interchange, which seems to be a problem at this point. One of the problems with this entire industrial area is that we don't really have, uh, this is an, an entirely local roadway network running through here. River could probably be an arterial or a collector. <laughs> and instead it's a local road. We've got this local road with highway traffic just spilling onto it and that's creating issues. And that little reliever, you can see that traffic has already ticked up a percentage, which is really good. This is also becoming a problem quickly. And I have another solution and it's going to deal with roundabouts. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to be roundabouts because that is, you know, truthfully in the base game, one of the best things you can, you can get good at using are roundabouts. Uh, they just, they're very efficient. If you don't have traffic manager to help you, uh, you know, with time signals and different things like that to get through some of these struggles, you can certainly use roundabouts as your method of getting through some really challenging traffic situations. So again, we're gonna turn on everything but our guidelines. We'll go 120 out. We actually don't have the luxury of going 120 out over here. So our new train connection has, has really messed everything up, but so is our existing development. So we're gonna have to take some liberties. And that doesn't mean making a triangular roundabout. <laughs> a triangle about, if you will. 
But we will do this, which makes me feel bad. Uh, we'll, we'll redo a tunnel, which, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't love that. That is absolutely horrendous. We've got to do better than that. So now the trick's going to be, we're going to mirror this over here again. So now I want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting some pretty smooth angles on this. Making sure that we're prioritizing traffic going in the right direction. So that looks good to me. I also really strongly prefer that we're not using eminent domain <laughs> in, in ways that are unnecessary. Oh, you know what? I, I like this connection that I'm making on the other side a lot more, so we're just going to mirror that over here. Kind of keeps it tighter. And now we will upgrade the roundabouts. And this could be an absolute disaster. We're going to find out. Oh my goodness, it worked. <laughs> oh, why did I say that? Yeah, look at that. As soon as I get overly excited, I immediately find a place where it's broken. Go figure. <laughs> And we'll just, we will uh, just overlook how unreasonable that was. <laughs> yes, we can just shift the warehouse location. No big deal. <laughs> All right, so we've got this. I I'm feeling good about this. Let's see what it does. Hmm. It's going to try to do some lane things here, and then I realized it's not going to let me. So I'll give up on that. The main reason for that is there's a bump right here. Oh, I could, I could, I could make it work. It'll just be a lot of work to make it happen. This is ugly. I'm not gonna lie. This is not ideal. But I think, I think it's gonna clear up over time. I really wish this roundabout was larger. I wish that it didn't have this hill. Oh, I wish so many things. But it is working. It is working. So I'm just going to accept it. This I love less so, and I certainly don't love what it's done to connectivity. That is probably the biggest issue. There's not a lot I can do about that because of my roads that are available to me. I don't have a three lane pedestrian road, so I'd have to actually create a pedestrian bridge across here or some other way around it. That's probably a future project and probably not what I want to take on just right now. But you can see the traffic is cleared up. And that was the main thing I was hoping for. See where we're at, 79%. We're still dealing with this madness right here. But Keller House is kind of that arterial going through here. If we had a collector to link the I-10 Industrial Park, I-10 doesn't exist anymore. That's kind of funny. Or it's been relocated here, maybe. This might be some spur number, though, now, because this really is a lo local highway. It's the Verde Beach Highway. Let's take a look at what we're seeing here. We're seeing backups. We're seeing train backups. Oh no. Crazy train backups. Oh. All originating from this. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Well, this was unexpected. Um, you know, it's episode 38. I decided to record an extra episode. Of course, there's going to be a tsunami. <laughs> well, you know, this airport has been really nice. <laughs> I'm glad we got to experience it for a couple of episodes. I'm really wondering what else is going to happen. Um, we might just... Why don't we just take a, a good vantage point and uh, we'll just see. Well, the airport, it, it's in a bit of a bad way. But it looks like the rest of the city is good. So we've got that going for us. Uh, we might want to... I don't see anything else happening down here, so it's just it's just the airport. Which is just our entire water supply at this point. So, 
We, we might have a bit of a death wave coming. Oh, we're in the flight path. Just planes flying at us. Uh, I think we might, we might be okay. We didn't. So I don't have buoys over here, so I don't know how bad this tsunami is, but it clearly wasn't that bad. We got away with one. <laughs> We, we definitely got away with one. And uh, I think that we're just going to have to take that as a win. Because this could have been really bad. This could have been very, very bad. Our population, uh, we've got a couple people that, that died. But it's not like it could have been. This could have been terrible. So, we're. I think sometimes you just you get a message that tells you you, you, you need to take you need to call it. <laughs> I think the, uh, the tsunami hitting the city is definitely a, an appropriate uh, sign that this is it for today's episode. <laughs> As was uh, you know, this traffic here that I'm going to clearly need to, to focus on at some point soon. This didn't work. Um, that happens. It happens uh, no, no matter who you are. Sometimes you make a design choice that just doesn't doesn't pan out. I think part of this was pursuing the the bridge pack, <laughs> and now I have this uh, beautiful bridge that just doesn't work for what I'm trying to do. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> I know I'm I, I uh, I'm not feeling very confident, truthfully, but we'll see. The only thing I do know, I, I do feel confident about, is that I'm confident that I need to change this because it looks terrible together. Mixing and matching bridges is not a good thing. We're still talking about tsunamis. All right, and I guess with, with reason, there's still a lot of water over here. <laughs> but the airport's still operating and nobody... Oh, 200, 300 people dying. Do we have a... Is that a wave? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want it here. Oh, that is brutal. You know, it was bound to happen. It was it was bound to happen. <laughs> that doesn't mean I was I was ready for it. Just, uh, yeah, it, it's... This could have been really bad. You know, I, it could have certainly come up and taken out the entire uh, Verde Beach Central Station area. But that doesn't mean it feels good. <laughs> It doesn't mean it feels good at all. So I, I don't see... Oh, is this our, our, our gazebo? We'll rebuild it. Wait, wait, wait. A tsunami with an intensity of 8.2 is about to happen? Wait, is this a, is this a double tsunami? Oh, no, no, it's an earthquake. Oh, are you kidding me? At the same time? Oh. I just got done saying I should have called it. <laughs> I should have called it. <laughs> Ooh. That... That is a strong earthquake. Uh, this is not going to be good for the Hamilton experience. This is not going to be good at all for the Hamilton experience. Look at the wave. It's... Oh. Oh. There, there it is. Oh. Just... It's coming. It's it's gonna crash right into it. Well, this this will give us an opportunity to use new keys, because we're about to destroy all of the Hamilton experience. It's gone. Lights are out. Let's see what people are doing on here. Just casual. He's he's still doing backflips. He's still hanging out. Everything's fine. No one noticed the earthquake. Everyone's back to normal. We've got this gigantic tsunami wave coming from it. We've got. Our fires, because, of course. <laughs> well, don't worry about this, fire department. We're going to have a wave that's going to come here and destroy this entire area and put the fire out. So I guess we've got that going for us. Oh, my goodness. The water. It's not even going to come over here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's just like the one time that the fire shouldn't matter. And here we are. The entire harbor burning down during a tsunami earthquake situation. Oh my goodness. 
Is that another wave? Is that going out or in? Okay, it's going out. What is going on? This is insane. <laughs> tsunami, earthquake, tsunami. This in rapid succession. Things have to clear up soon. Thankfully, our population's rebounding. Like th this, we're losing a ton of money right now. <laughs> Just got like a ridiculous amount of money. Our traffic's improving. Um, so we've got that going for us. This disaster over here is, 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 is a problem, but and the Bob Ross Memorial Interchange is, it's heavy, but it's not congested. Our roundabouts have resolved Keller House. Things are okay. Well, no, things are terrible here on River Street. This, this whole thing might need to be redone, but we're at 81%, which I think is higher than we've been in a long time. And you can see that we have heavy traffic flow in these areas, but it's not terrible. The one thing that we have, again, is this rail issue. And man, man, oh man, just the amount of traffic backing up and it's backing up to both the harbor, which at this point in a tsunami would make total sense. Um, but it's backing up at the harbor. It's backing up in both directions. So they want to make this movement here. That movement's backed up. They're coming in here and dropping off in the wrong one. So this is exact. So that one way actually kind of messed everything up, which shoot. Well, I guess not unexpected. So I know that this is probably the most hated thing that I could do, but I'm going to go back to it. I will readily admit that this is not me striving for perfection or re realism. This is me striving for functionality to work. And I'm hoping that having this little loop here will force trains to take the correct track and cause some of this backup to, to, to go away. Because uh, this is absolutely not what I was hoping for <laughs> when we separated the cargo from the passenger rail to have massive backups basically everywhere. The other thing we could do is have that hokey connection across here that we used to have. Good news is our passenger rail is, is totally free from this congestion. Uh, unfortunately, Verde Beach is just turning into a mini Chicago, which, you know, Chicago's a nice city. <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I, I, I would like to see our cargo functioning in a way that is a little more reasonable. And this is, in my mind, not good. And we're seeing the backups kind of in all directions and it's just, it's not, not good. So we're going to need to continue to focus on this. And if you have ideas on how to fix this, I'm all ears. Uh, this is certainly not my forte or my, my strong suit in the game. I am uh, just trying my best. <laughs> sometimes my best is an epic failure, but truthfully, this does seem like it is starting to clear up a little bit. Kind of curious. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still a problem <laughs> but you can see heavy but moving heavy but moving is okay heavy and stopped whether it's trains or traffic that's a problem and our traffic is just bouncing all over the place so i think we're gonna leave it here we've had a very exciting episode of things <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna leave it we're, we're, we have to fix this traffic stuff but we at least have uh, improved connectivity through here. Next steps, this isn't where I wanna leave this connectivity. We have Keller House here. We need some more co collector connections through here. And I think that like 8th Street right here, that is going to become a collector at some point when we redo our train network. We can move this train station now that we have all this extra land, reclaim some of the space and use the reclaim space as the, kind of like the catalyst for this this whole deal. Uh, imagine the government selling some of the land that it that is obtained. So the other thing is I'd love to replace some of these train stations with some of the new ones. This is not attractive in my mind. Uh, and I think the new ones are just really nice. So we are gonna we're gonna check that out in a future episode. But for today, things are working. Things are looking good. Tsunami. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, the fire didn't take us out. The tsunami 
didn't take us out. The Hamilton experience is still a wonderful experience. Everything's good over here. Airport is lovely. Everything is awesome. So we're just going to leave it here. So I finished recording the episode and realized I made a huge mistake. So I'm going to cut in here and make this correction. That huge mistake is very, very apparent. We didn't connect up our old main drag to Keller House. How could I make that mistake? So we also want to make sure that our main street is connected up to Keller House. And we have this totally rational Main Street type connection all the way to Keller House. We can now make a bunch of local connections through here in the future. Everything's going to be wonderful. So uh, we'll, we'll get back to the normal video now. But if you don't see this connection, that's why. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They help me make all this content. In fact, one of the things I was able to do with uh, Patreon supporters help recently is upgrade my network, which I hope will enable me to get my uh, videos to 4K at some point in the future. Um, so their support's really, really appreciated, but yours is as well. Uh, the most important thing you can do for the channel is hit the like button and subscribe. It's really helpful. Thank you so much for joining me, and I want you to stay with me for this brief city tour. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.